So uh, welcome to this lesson on the atom and the model of the atom and in particular um, the uh, drawing of an atom. We're going to we're going to draw an atom in this particular uh, lesson. Now understand something here that we cannot see the atom. These are models of what we believe the atom looks like. They've been built over many many years and uh, this is not a, a completely solid thing. There's always a chance that somewhere down the road um, uh, they change this, but it's been pretty well accepted now for probably close to a uh, hundred years that this is the model of the atom and we're not going to probably see it change anytime soon. Uh, at least since the early 1900s, this has been in case, okay, in, in the place. Now, the credit for this model goes mostly to a guy by the name of Bohr and another guy by the name of Rutherford, okay? And we talked about them and their contributions. I believe uh, Bohr is the electron guy and Rutherford is the nucleus guy. And so Chad, uh, was it Chadwick, uh, James Chadwick was Rutherford's uh, assistant and he doesn't really even get mentioned in here. So it's funny how that is. History is, is like that, right? So let's start by understanding a couple things about the nucleus, which is made up of the protons and neutrons. So this is our nucleus right here, right? This is the center of the atom, okay? And it's made up of both neutrons and protons. And here's our symbols that we use. We've seen this already. So found in the nucleus is where we find the protons and the neutrons, okay? So both words, nucleus, can go, so you can jot those into there. That's what I've highlighted there with the yellow highlighter, okay? Now, there's a cut. one thing that's significantly different between the protons and the neutrons, and that is the neutrons have no charge where the protons have a positive charge, okay? And there's another thing that's common to both in that they both get what's called an atomic unit mass of one. Now, we do have a way to write the atomic unit number, which is instead of writing atomic unit, we use this thing called like a cursive U. Okay, that's a, that's, that means, this here means atomic unit. Okay, and um, it's kind of a weird thing, but just writing it a kind of a U like that, usually there's a little extra tail on the leading edge, I don't know, whatever, it's not a big deal, okay? Now, when we draw the Bohr-Rutherford uh, atom, we, we get something like this, and we have this nucleus, which is the center part of it here, and these two things are in here, both the new, uh, protons and new, neutrons. And I, I really can't distinguish between the two here because it doesn't say one is positive, one is negative. But let's just pretend that these guys are little positives here. Uh, all, the, all the lighter colored ones, you know, have a little positive. So we'll call those the protons, proton plus. And that means the darker green ones on here are neutrons. Now, if you printed this off, you won't be able to see the color difference, but you maybe see it in shading. And it doesn't matter. You don't have to write the pluses in there, but it's just, I'm doing that just to, to clarify those things, okay? So this is our nucleus right here, the center of the, uh, the atom. And this is also where all the mass is, okay? So I think you can recall from your previous uh, lesson that the mass of an atom is mass equals the number of protons plus the number of number of neutrons. I should put a plus there. Always put a plus with your protons, a minus with your electrons, okay? Now, there's two other things that we, we can draw in our model of the atom, and that are our uh, electrons in our orbits, okay? So I'm going to talk about them, and then I'll go back up and label them on the diagram. I like to keep it nice and big here because it's easier for me to write. So the electrons orbit the nucleus. An orbit means like they fly around, okay? They literally fly around. And there's some debate, and you, you may learn differently in the future if you continue to take chemistry exactly how they move, whether they move in just like planets or they kind of zip around in different areas or clouds. It's, it's I don't know. It's, I'm always hearing different things. So it depends on... Um, 
what you're studying there. It doesn't matter. We're going to look at them as like they go around the nucleus, okay? <clears throat> Electrons have a negative charge, okay? And that's very important. And that will counterbalance the charge of the positive. So for every positive proton, we want a negative elect uh, electron, and then we have zero charge for the uh, for the overall atom. Okay, and that's how we're going to look at all of our atoms today. We will look in the future at atoms that have a charge, and we'll see how that works. But that's that's a future lesson. Now, the mass of any electron is zero. Okay, we consider it zero. Now, it's technically not zero because if you know electrons didn't have a mass, they wouldn't be part of matter. But they do, and that mass is very tiny. It's one two thousandths of a atomic unit. Okay, and because it's so small, it's just easy for us to simply say, yeah, they just don't count. You know, like they're they're, you know, point zero zero one, you know, or point zero 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 five or whatever it is of a, a atomic unit. So we just don't even worry about them. Okay, now. If I look at the diagram and I want to label where the electrons are on my diagram, I want to label each of these things here. And typically they would have a little negative sign associated with each one, okay? And this is my E minuses. And when we draw them on ours, we're going to actually draw them as E minuses so that's really clear. But this is just a, a nice illustration that I stole off the internet. And it's better than I can draw, so I'm gonna I'm going with it, right? Okay. Now, when we go down, and we want to look at the last thing that we haven't labeled here, which is actually our orbits and energy levels. Okay. And orbits are these things that circle around a uh, atom, and as we go out, they kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. Much like the way planets orbit the sun. Um, you know, I believe Mars is closer to the sun than us, so it has like a, a ring that goes around closer than Earth. And then, you know, the, some of the planets like Saturn and Pluto, if you want to call them a planet still, they, uh, they are way further out, okay? That's the same way. So we have these things called orbits or energy levels. They like to call them energy levels because as electrons move from one to the other, they gain or lose energy. And so levels of energy are associated with them. And orbit one holds two electrons, orbit two holds eight electrons, orbit three holds eight, and then orbit four holds 18, and then orbit five also holds 18, and then orbit six goes up another, uh, I'm not sure if it's to 30, I believe, but we don't get into drawing ones that are way uh, down the periodic table. It's just simply don't do that. So we can go back up and label this last thing on our, on our um, um, model of the uh, atom here. And so this now is what we refer to as the orbits or energy levels. All right, so we've labeled the, the diagram and now we're gonna get into drawing our own and we don't quite you know, have to draw as detailed as this, but we have a nice system whereby which we do that. So let's take a look at um, drawing one of our own or what they look like. And, and this is a great example right here of what, what a atom that we've drawn might look like, okay? So what we do is we draw the nucleus, kind of usually use a slightly darker circle around the nucleus, and then little lighter circles around the outside, okay? And then in the nucleus, we state how many protons and how many neutrons. We don't have to draw each of them. Like, it'd be get a little bit technical if we had to do that. We could, I suppose, and use different colors and whatnot, but it, it does get a little challenging. So I just generally write it like this. And so the number of protons in this particular atom is seven. And the number of neutrons is also seven. And then I can count the number of electrons. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. Now it asks me, well, what's the name of this? Well, in order to do the name of it, I need to use my periodic table. Okay, so I have my periodic table open. 
usually do that when I've got my chemistry around. I've got it sitting on a table beside me or whatever if I printed it. And here we go. Oh, look at this. There is number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is right here. And that's nitrogen. Okay. And nitrogen has a, uh, a num number, atomic number of seven. So that means it has seven protons. And it has an N for a symbol. So if I go back to my my uh, worksheet or note here, I can add in a few things. I can add in the name. I can add in that it is nitrogen. Nitrogen. And the symbol is just capital N. And then I might sometimes ask, well, what is the mass of this particular atom? Well, the mass of this atom is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. That's seven plus seven. And if you don't know how to do that, use your calculator, but seven plus seven is 14. And the units are atomic units. So instead of writing atomic units, I just use this symbol U. And don't ask me why, I don't have any control over it. That's just the symbol that they choose to use, okay? I don't have any say in that. And then we have a charge. Now our charge is always associated with number of negatives and the number of positives. So how many positives do I have? Well, I have seven positives and I have seven negatives. So they cancel each other out and I have a charge of zero, okay? And that gives me a charge of zero right there. Now all of the atoms that we're working with today, we're just gonna go with zero charge. Next lesson, we'll start looking at atoms that have charge. So we want to build on this one step at a time, okay? Okay, I'm going to scroll down and now we're going to actually draw a particular atom. So in this particular case, we typically write it as, you know, draw a fluorine atom with a mass of 19. Now in the activity um, that we do, um, that you're going to do later, okay, I will write this in a slightly different way. I will write it with using the symbols because math, uh, you know, just like we like using the symbols. So fluorine has a symbol of F and I'll say 19. And sometimes I write U. So I'm saying that this is fluorine with a mass of 19. Okay. And that I need to know that so that I can calculate the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And we're going to do that in a second. So the mass here is 19 mu, and the charge for all of these is just going to be zero. We're not even going to worry about it. The number of protons will always equal the number of electrons. And now what we're going to do is draw this, okay? So I'm going to give myself just a touch more space here. Maybe make it just a tiny bit smaller on the screen so I got a little more room, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it. And the first thing I do is always start with writing out what I have for protons, electrons, and what I have for neutrons, okay? Now, I have to remember that mass equals my protons, whoops, jumping ahead here, my protons plus, plus my neutrons, okay? And that's the number of each of these. Right now, I know this is nine, and I know my mass is 19, so therefore, what do I have to add to nine to get to 19? Well, most of you will be able to do that in your head and say that's 10, okay? But if you're struggling, that's 19 take away nine. That should leave me with 10. And then you can test it by adding the two numbers together to make sure you get the mass, okay? So I've already got given to me, because it's fluorine, sorry, I don't know if I, I might've jumped wait a bit a bit ahead there and that I needed to look at my periodic table and see that fluorine is nine and I was just maybe jumping to that fluorine has a atomic number nine and that's where the nine comes from right here for protons because the atomic number remember is the same as the the number of protons and then the neutrons would be 10 so I have those two bits of information and then I also need the electrons so what I often do is I write right in here, I go like this, I'll say my number of protons plus equals nine. My number of electrons minus equals, in this case, always the same because the charge is zero. So it'll be nine. These two will be equal. And my number 
of neutrons equals 10. And now I can draw my diagram. And you'll see that the questions I give you, I already provide this written out for you to fill in. So you just have to fill in the numbers there, looking at your periodic table, finding your atomic number, finding your number of protons from that, and then calculating your number of neutrons. And then you can go ahead and draw your uh, atom. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll down a touch more, give myself a tiny bit of space, clean up my mess here, a couple dots, and I'm going to go. So how do I do this? Well, I write 9P+. Plus. I'm going to keep it pretty small here because I'm drawing the nucleus. And then I have 10 neutrons, 10 neutrons. And then I draw usually a pretty dark circle around this. You know, I'll darken it up a little bit, you know, like that. Now I'm going to draw my electrons, okay? And the electrons are actually a fair bit more tricky. Now, the first thing I want to do is draw my first orbit. And to draw my first orbit, I kind of want it light, okay? So I pick, picked a gray color. You can just write lightly with your pen. And, you know, I'm going to kind of go like this. You can see clearly a lighter line. I don't want a really dark line, right? It's nice and light. And then I can draw electrons in that, okay? Now, electrons in the first orbit can only have two. It says so right here if I go up back up to this. Remember, orbit one can have two, orbit two can have eight, okay? And in this particular case, now I'm going to draw two electrons. Now, when I draw them, I usually draw them right on the line, and I make my pen darker, and I put an E and a little minus sign. Notice that the protons, I had a plus, E had the minus. And right now, we have had two electrons and we have nine protons. So nine pluses and two negatives, that's not balancing. We got to get it to, so we have the same number. Okay. Now I'm going to draw the next orbit because I can only put two electrons in the very first orbit. Okay. So draw another orbit just outside that one. Okay. Nice and light. And if you, you know, you kind of skip a line, a bit of the line here or there, that's okay. Right. Like that. It's not perfect. Right. And as you can see, I'm not a genius at it. Now, I can put, I have to put another seven electrons to balance the nine here. I've got two, so that means I need another seven on here. And I'm allowed up to eight, so that's good. I don't have to worry about another orbit after this. If I had to put, like, say, 14 more, I'd fill this one up with eight, and then I'd start another layer, but I don't have to. I'm, I'm good. So now I'm going to go like this. I'm going to start putting them on. I go one. Oh, usually go with a darker pen here. Sorry. One, two, three. And you'll notice that I'm spreading them out. Four, five, six, seven. And if I count, I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine electrons. And I have one, nine proton pluses. The neutrons have nothing to do with the charge. They just have to do with the mass, okay? And 9 plus 10 gives me 19, so I'm good there. And this would be my diagram of fluorine, right? 19, okay? We call that fluorine 19 because it has a mass of 19. And there is no charge on it, so we don't have to worry about it, okay? That is drawing an atom, okay? Let's move down. Let's draw a couple more, these lithium atoms, okay? Now, lithium, let's just go look at the periodic table. Where is lithium? Well, lithium is over here. It, it is atomic number three. So it has three protons, okay? And that means in this these questions, it'll have three uh, uh, electrons as well, okay? So let's draw one here. So we're going to go 3P plus, and it's telling me I have three neutrons. Three neutrons. Draw the nucleus. Done. Now I'm going to go and draw the first orbit. And the first orbit can only have, by now you should know, two electrons. Okay. So I'm going to draw the first two electrons in there. 
And then I'm going to draw the next orbit right around here. And I only need one more electron. So I'm just going to draw him in about right here. Boom, like that. Now, it asked me what's the mass. So the mass of this particular lithium ion is six because it's three protons plus three neutrons. So protons plus neutrons equals three plus three equals six atomic units. Okay, that one has six atomic units. Now I'm going to draw another one and this time it's a lithium atom with four neutrons. Okay, and this can actually happen. Okay, now this is three protons plus and four neutrons. And then I draw my nice dark nucleus around it. Then I'm going to draw my first energy level. And you can see how this is kind of, eh, it's kind of fun. It's something different than what we've been doing. It's not something, whoops, it's not something that we typically um, are doing uh, with respect to uh, notes. Uh, we're drawing something. We have to use, utilize a, a different uh, use of skills. Okay. Eight electron minus and now I need one more electron yet to balance things off so I'm going to go around here all the way around and I'm going to put one more electron on here now my mass again my mass equals my proton pluses plus my neutrons again this equals three but not plus three three plus four which equals seven atomic units. Okay, now we can examine this more closely and that's what I've done with the little note below is that all lithium ions have three protons. That we can't change. If we change the number of protons, right, if we change the number of protons, we essentially go for, if we add one, we become beryllium. If we take one away, we become helium. Changing the number of protons changes the atomic number changes the substance okay but we can add neutrons we added an extra neutron here we have four instead of three so all lithium ions will have three protons but not all lithium atoms will have the same number of neutrons okay protons fixed neutrons not so much therefore not all lithium atoms will have the same mass, okay? Atoms of the same element that have different masses are called, they're given a special name and it's called isotopes, okay? So sometimes you're gonna hear people talk about isotopes. It's the same atom that needs to be, you know, put exactly the same atom, but different masses, okay? And they'll often refer to atoms with respect to the mass that's there, okay? And that is called an isotope. All right, I have left you with a series of questions here. So I'm just gonna explain them so you can understand. I want you to draw a whole bunch of atoms and practice this. And we will take it up in our, our, our lesson, I promise you. So beryllium is an atom. Let, let's maybe just do the first one uh, together here, right? We'll do it together here. So beryllium, nine atomic units, okay? So what I need to do is, first thing I need to do is look up what is beryllium? Like where is it on my periodic table? Well, beryllium is right here, BE, okay? It has atomic number of four. So that tells me that it has four protons, okay? So let's go back. That's all I really need to do is get that, that information and I'm set, I'm golden. So how many protons are here? Well, that is four right here. Well, then I ask myself, well, how many neutrons? I have to add to a mass of nine. I need to have protons and neutrons making nine. So therefore, this here has to be five because four plus five will give me nine. And my electrons will always be the exact same as my protons because all of our atoms right now are neutral. Okay, so this will be four as well. So it's going to be the same as, as that one there. 
Now I can go ahead and draw this, okay? Now I don't give you a ton of space, but I give a little bit here. So you go 4P plus and 5N. That's my nucleus, okay? Then it's time to draw my energy levels, right? First or orbits, whichever way you want to call them. Energy levels, orbits, all the same. Sometimes if I know I have more than two electrons, I just draw the second orbit right away while I've got my kind of lighter color in here. And then I start adding in my electrons. Electron one, two. Oh, that orbit is full. Then I can go to the next orbit. Ele one, two. Now I have my four electrons, my four protons. I'm balanced. I have a mass of nine because four plus five, and I've finished drawing brilliant. I've given you at least, I think, six or seven more to work on and do, and we'll take them up in class as a, as a group, okay, on, on our team's meeting or in class in person if we ever were to get there. All right, hope you enjoyed that and uh, look forward to seeing you again for our next lesson.